Welcome to Determined to Succeed. I'm your host, Dawn, also known as Unique Connector. So I'm really thrilled to have Laura on the show today. And so Laura, I want to kick it off. It seems like you really have your shit figured out. Have you always had it figured out? Talk to me about this. Yeah, Dawn, I have. Um, never had a problem in my life. Anyway, thanks for inviting me today. This was really fun. I'll just <laughs> see myself out, you know, just... I'm so special. No, yeah, of course. I've had, um, you know, we were talking in the pre-show about how how a lot of the similar challenges we faced in business. And I will say that one of the things, well, let me take you back to March, 2020. So I had spent many years as a consultant. I was doing um, some really big independent consulting for Fortune 500. And I decided in 2018 to transition my business into public speaking because I like talking about how to grow a business and all this stuff. Um, And that I greatly underestimated how difficult that would be. And by Mm -hmm. greatly, I mean, like, I thought I was the shit. And uh, apparently I was the only one who thought that. Like, it was freaking hard. And so I had been grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding at this business for a couple of years in March, 2020, March, I'd find like, I kind of had felt like in 2020, like, okay, like I'm starting to get some deals. Things are coming through. Like I can see 2020 is going to be a great year for me to go out into the world on all these public stages. And then like March 15th hit, everything got canceled. Every deal I had that year was like done and over with. And I remember very clearly sitting in my bedroom and just like lying on the bed and just staring at the ceiling, like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. And I had no idea. I was for like many people, I was just like, so depressed. I felt that, you know, I just had the rug pulled out from under me. And I realized that my dreams of speaking were not, you know, became very apparent after you know, at first we thought, oh, maybe things will open in June. Okay. Maybe September. And it just became more and more apparent as time went on that it would be years before I would ever be able to do that again. And so I had to put that to the side Mm -hmm. and I had to figure some shit out. And so I say that as someone who has literally hit rock bottom with zero in revenue and Mm -hmm. zero idea of how to like figure out like, what the hell am I doing next? Where am I going? What am I doing? And so, um, yeah, I've been there. I'm sorry. Was there more to the question? Because no, I loved it, but this is the part two of, we have pivot moments right there. You had a pivot moment that you had to figure something out and go different than what you did. Yeah, it was awful. And, you know, so I I really had to sit down and I said to myself, okay, what do you want to do? And I had a couple options. I could go back into corporate consulting, which I'd been doing for years very successfully. um, Or I could figure out something else. And there was this funny feeling inside of me, which felt that corporate consulting, just for me personally, did not feel like moving forward Mm. to me because I'd done it for years. I knew it extremely well. There was a part of me that just felt like that's not your path right now. And so I just, without understanding that, just listened to it. I said, that doesn't feel right to me. And I said, well, what I had also been doing in kind of the background for years is I had been coaching people on how to uh, grow their consulting businesses or their solopreneur, small agency businesses, signing bigger deals. I just been doing that in the background. People would hear me speak. They'd say, Hey, like, can you help me? And I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. And when in March, 2020, as, as we're coming to this realization and through the rest of 2020, I said, you know what? That actually, I had to feel my way through this. This wasn't like, like a stroke of lightning or bolt of lightning, but, um, I realized I was like, no, that's actually my path. 
I turned 40 in 2020 and it felt very much to me like it wasn't just another year. It was like, what do you want to do for the second half of your life? Mm. And I just felt very called to change the direction of where I had been heading and to say, you know what? You can actually affect the lives of thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people in this world that we live in by teaching people about financial freedom through running your own business. And that, it, that eventually became my mission. And that's what I do today. I mean, and, you know, from March, 2020 to today, I mean, it's about, you know, four and a half years later, but the um, process of figuring out how to do that and figuring out how to grow a business around that. And now having served hundreds of people um, has been incredibly gratifying. And I am so glad that I stuck it out through the discomfort of that whole process. Cause that was real uncomfortable. Yeah. The real uncomfortable of that uncertainty of things. And it wasn't like a clear path, you know? And so even to maybe, you know, some listeners or maybe listening and going, ah, yeah, I don't have a clear path. What were the little like whispers that maybe you had or the things that you knew you were maybe on the right path? You know, what were things that you were listening to yourself that you just knew like, I'm going to give this a try. It's worth it. Um, I like that you call them whispers. Yeah. So that's really cool. Um, I, I think for anyone who's not sure, I think there's a, just like, like, I'm going to talk about this in a couple of ways. There's like a very practical aspect to this. And then there's like a feeling aspect to this. Mm -hmm. So from a very pragmatic standpoint, there's a few things you just need to know. You need to know what you're good at. You need to know what people will pay you for. You need to know um, what people need, like just figuring out those things. It just the pragmatics of like, how do I move forward? Now, there's another aspect to this, which is feeling our way through that. And so what I would encourage anyone to do is you're like feeling your way through this whole process is asking yourself, what do I get excited about? Mm -hmm. What do I do as you're doing it, by the way, as you're doing it, what do I do that I just get lost? In? Mm -hmm. I could just do this for hours. I don't even realize an hour has gone by. It feels like five minutes. I just had so much fun. That's a clue to what you really like and what you're really good at and what people need help with and what people would pay you for. Look at that, right? I have, I have a client right now. Actually, can I tell a story, Don? Please, please tell a story. Okay, I have a client right now who um, we've been through this exercise with her before. And she freaking loves data and dashboards. Ooh, like, I hate that. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I can't even, you know, I'm like going to throw up if I have to look at an Excel spreadsheet, but she loves this stuff. That's her like zone of brilliance and genius. And she's really, really good at it. And so she had actually just finished up. Um, we worked together a $30,000 a month retainer. Okay. So she's got this huge retainer client. She's doing great work. It goes on for several months. And then they say, okay, like, you know, thank you very much. We're, you know, end a contract we're done. And so the contract ends and this funny thing happens is that suddenly one, there's tons of space on her calendar. She's looking at a wide open calendar kind of with fear yeah. of like, what do I do? She, um, there were things about that big contract and there's, and a lot of people who do big contracts have this fear. There's things about this big contract she didn't like that were problems that annoyed her. And so she would kind of get into this like mode and she, she was in this mode of like, well, that was really good money. But does making 30K a month from one client mean I have to dislike part of the work or just like the people I work with? And a lot of people have this sort of hidden belief of if I make a lot of money, 
I'm not going to like what I do because if you've ever worked in a corporate role and you've had, and you know this, Don, you've had tons of responsibility and you've made a lot of money, you've probably hated parts of your life doing yeah. that. Yeah. And so she was kind of look. she came to me and she's like, Laura, I, I have this open calendar. I'm scared. I don't have money coming through, even though she's logically, rationally made enough money for the whole year. Like yeah. we're fine. It's still scary. And so this is a point where we can start to do some crazy shit. Okay. This is where self-sabotage is like, oh, I'm here. I just showed up. And I said, okay, we have two options right now. One option is to lean into the fear and grab more work just to have work on your plate that you don't really love because you're too scared to sit in the discomfort of yeah. not fully knowing. Mm -hmm. And the second option is to determine what you would really love to do with your time. Take what we learned from that huge gig and get better at it and say, well, here are the things I'm not going to be doing again. Here's what I will be doubling down on. And here I know more about the people I don't want to work with. She chose that latter option. And so when we think about, and so longer term thinking, right? Not alleviating the short-term fear with some sort of contract that we hate that gets us in a vicious cycle of hating our clients and not being paid well for what we do. She sat with the discomfort of, I'm actually going to take the framework. We teach a framework in my program called the Elevate Framework. I'm going to put it to, to work and I'm going to let, I'm going to trust that things are going to come through. Okay. So here's what happened. I talked to her literally yesterday. Yeah. And she said to me, Laura, how do I know when I'm book solid and can't take on any more clients? Mm. And I said, well, why are you asking? She said, because I have so much work coming in right now that I'm scared to take on more work. And so where she is four months later is she's at $50,000 quarters in her business. And we'd worked on how to turn that into $150,000 quarters doing a 20 to 25 hour work week. Okay. So very, very achievable. And I'm bringing this up because for the people who are listening to this, thinking I'm stuck, I can't move through this thing. One, you might just need a little bit more time. Two, start leaning into the things you like. And three, start to spelling the bullshit in your head that's telling you things like, if I get paid well, I'm going to hate the work. Mm -hmm. Because it's just junk in your head. And it doesn't have, there's nothing in the world that says that has to be true at all. True. And it's past maybe experience that, you know, is maybe triggering you to think that way, but it doesn't mean it's true. Exactly. It doesn't mean, and you're a different person than you were a year ago, a week ago, a month ago. So you're a different person. These are different circumstances. You've learned more. You've learned to advocate for yourself more. And um, clients typically really appreciate that kind of clarity. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and it's a journey, you know, and I think that's even the part for me where some clients I work with too, where they're like, I want this big, big deal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you even ask for that big deal? Are you even ready and confident yes. feeling confident mm -hmm. to even ask for it? And that's exactly the other thing too. <clears throat> like we can dream big, which is cool, but also too, how can we prepare ourselves to even do that? You say and you want it, yes, but everything demonstrates that you don't believe you deserve it. Mm -hmm. I had a woman who was working with me um, to that point who uh, she couldn't sign. She could not sign bigger retainers. Everyone wanted to work with her hourly and she'd come and work with me. She'd say, Laura, nothing's working. Nothing's working. And I would listen to her speak mm -hmm. as she was speaking to me. Her voice was trembling. Mm -hmm. She had... And by the way, this isn't to shame her. This is just to expose part of the challenge. Yeah. Her voice was trembling. She was stuttering. She was, it was like run on sentence after run on sentence that were way too long. And I said, is, is this how you're talking to your clients? Because it sounds like you don't even like, I am not 
instilled with confidence when you speak. I am not instilled with clarity when you speak. And cash loves clarity. Yeah. Cash loves confidence. So if I'm walking around sounding scared as hell, why would anyone trust me with a big deal? And so her her homework was to get into learning how to be a more confident public speaker mm. because she needs to hone that skill in order to confidently sell. If you don't have that skill, I mean, you can have the best proposal in the world and people are going to look at you like, who's this ding dong? Yeah. 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 It's true. So I want to even switch back to even what you said earlier too about the female or the too much work. So was she realizing boundaries that she was coming up with or just the expectations that she wanted to fully, because it was such a higher deal? Like, let's talk more even about that, where some people sometimes too, it's like you build the confidence, you ask for the work, mm -hmm. you get it. And then that moment sometimes like, oh gosh, did I overbook myself or do I yeah. have the boundaries to stop when I'm supposed to stop and not so give too much? The biggest challenge, particularly among women, um, men are not um, excused from this, but it's a very big challenge I see with women is that there is a belief. Okay. And if you're hearing this, just like check yourself. Do you think that in order to sign a big deal, 25, 50, hundred thousand quarter of a million dollar deal, do you think you have to offer more? Mm -hmm. If the answer, if any part of that answer is, well, yeah, duh, Laura, of course I have to offer more, you have a problem that mm. needs to be solved. What you need to understand, and everyone needs, please hear me on this, folks. Large contracts, we've got to get out of this industrial revolution type of thinking. You are not a factory worker in the 1850s who's making steel plates and, you know, you know, watching them come down the line and being charged hourly for your time. Okay. Being paid out. That's not the world we live in, but as consultants, we often tend to think about our work in terms of output mm -hmm. and in terms of like how many man hours I'm putting in as if we're living in the industrial revolution. Y'all, this is the information age. Okay. So what are people paying for? Well, if you're a full-time employee, they're paying for your butt to sit in a seat for a certain number of hours and get some stuff done. All right. If you're a consultant, that is not what they're paying for. They are paying for a result. They are paying for you to bring value to the organization based on what you do and based on what ha has been laid out as the value you're providing to the organization that is that can be and should be decoupled from how you do it. If I can come into a company and I can give you a strategy, for example, that is going to help your company save a million dollars over the next 12 months, wouldn't you want to know that more quickly then, yeah. oh, well, this is going to take six months for me to figure out. So I better sit my ass in the seat for 40 hours a week. No, a consultant, they're going to come in, they're going to do their work and their research, and they're going to present you with your findings. You don't want to learn, wait six months to hear that. But consult, but people need to realize that's how you need to structure your business is based on the results you provide and the value they bring to the client. That is the price they're paying. They're paying for the value you're providing. They're not paying for you to sit down at a desk for 40 hours a week. They're not paying for you to pack a proposal with superfluous stuff, that's, that's what you're doing to yourself to feel like you're enough. The client isn't asking for that. The client's asking for the result. Give them the result. Mm. It's true. Results are the thing and what they want. Yeah, that's all they want. They want the result. They want to understand you have a process to get there. Obviously, they want to understand maybe you have a framework or something that's going to help you 
achieve that result. So this client who I said, who just is at the like, uh, she had the 30,000. Okay. Let me just get into this. She had the $30,000 a month retainer. She's working yeah. about 35, 40 hours a week for this client, which basically means she can't really take on more work. Okay. Yeah. So we got really clear when that ended, what did you like doing about with this work? Put that, write that down. What did you not like doing? Write that on a separate list. Great. Uh, what did you like about the people? Document that. What did you dislike about? Document that. The work she's doing now, when I said she's earning 50 or going to be booking $50,000 in this quarter, and she has a plan for like 150,000 for future quarters. Yeah. She's only doing the stuff she likes. Mm -hmm. And when I sat down and I said, how much time does this take you per client? She, for, so an engagement's like two months, okay, for her. Okay. Per client, that's taking her, I mean, don't quote me, I think it's about for over the course of two months, 40 hours. Oh, okay. Okay, so we're talking about 40 hours a week to 20 hours a month. Yeah. Because she's gotten very clear. Now, notice she didn't actually lower her price she changed the structure in which she's working and she now has the ability to take on more clients as a result, which is something she'd like to do because she enjoys the variety of the work, but she's not working herself into the ground anymore because she's gotten very clear on what she offers and this is what she does. And she doesn't do any of the stuff she doesn't like, and she doesn't work with people she doesn't like, she doesn't like, and, and now it's selling, it's selling and she's getting more business. And for some reason, our brains are always thinking, I know we talked about this earlier before the show, but we are always thinking, well, it's got to be hard. This is too right? simple. Is this going to Oh, I know. I know. I mean, and I, I'll tell you, I am a grade A. I love it to be difficult. I don't know what happened to me as a child. Actually, I do know. I mm -hmm. was a um, very competitive musician Ooh. when I was growing up and I had to compete and I had to fight to get into music schools and get the first chair and win this competition, win that competition. And you, you know, you're constantly fighting. Yeah. And if you're, if you've ever done athletics, it's probably very, very similar um, or any sort of competitive thing where like, you've got to always fight. So like, I have this thing in myself, which damn, if, if it could be hard, I'll make it real hard. I'll make it like 10 times harder than it needs to be. And thank God I have enough experience now to realize bitch, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Sit your ass down. Why are you making this so hard on yourself? I mean, seriously, but that's only come, I would say after the age of 40 and after ha and having been coached and having gone through therapy and, you know, having really like looked at myself as like, why are you making this so hard on yourself? Business, I want to say it's very simple. Business can be very very simple. I, it's not always easy. And frankly, sometimes it's, it's just naturally hard, yeah. but it can be very simple. The steps to growing this type of business are very simple steps. Why don't people do them? Because, uh, they can't implement consistently because their minds and their doubts and their fears and their emotions get in the way because they've got bullshit in their head from some other person, a spouse, a parent, or somebody who's jealous of them mm -hmm. telling them they can't do it. I mean, the first piece of advice I'd give to anybody, and by the way, sorry, Don, about all of the noise in the background is, I don't know if you can hear my dogs going crazy, but you're good. They're, you're good. they're having a time. They're listening to this podcast and they're like, fuck yeah, I'm into it. So anyway, um, I completely lost my track, my train of, uh, my train of thinking right there. Um, oh, this is what I was going to say. You have got, so there's a lot of influences in our life. Family is designed to keep you safe. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, your parents' prerogative, your partner's prerogative is to keep you safe. If you yeah. are taking advice from people whose prerogative is to not watch you grow because that's fucking uncertain, stop getting advice from these people. And that may sound really harsh, but they're not actually here to help you. I'll stop drinking. Um, the insanity has come down. Anyway, you have got to surround yourself with people who are doing what you want to do. 
You have got to surround yourself with people who are where you want to go, right? You're going to get totally different advice from those folks than from the family that is um, really largely invested in holding you back. Now, I'm not saying every family is that way, but by and large, uh, I've seen it enough that I'm like, red flag, watch out. Be yeah. very careful who you talk to about your business. Very careful. Like I'm talking to you like about $100,000 deals. Like they're no big deal. If I said that to my neighbor, their head might explode. Right. They, or they might actually laugh in my face because that sounds outrageous. Yeah. And crazy. So you, yeah, you got to surround yourself with people where that's not even that big. I mean, surround yourself with people doing million dollar, $5 million deals. Mm, they exist. Yeah. And that's where I think too, it's, you know, how you said even to your family, they're there too, to, to save and protect you and, and to make mm-hmm. sure nothing happens. And sometimes we need that extra push to keep going exactly. ahead, see that this can happen. This, you know, yeah. I'm holding myself back and yes, that thinking bigger and keep going. And like how you said earlier, even at the beginning of the episode, how you pivoted and totally changed and look at yeah. sometimes things happen for a reason. You know, if that wouldn't have happened, I wonder where you'd be even right now. I think for all of us. I honestly don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm glad I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm glad I've been on the journey I've been on. Like it's, it's usually, and maybe other people feel this way and Don, maybe you feel this way. When I look back at life, I can see how the puzzle pieces that felt very disjointed at the time have come together. Mm-hmm. You yeah. can't see that in the moment. You can't see in the moment. It's almost like too, you got, I like for me, even too, as I think sometimes in my corporate days, I felt like I had my blinders on for so many years. Right. And, mm-hmm. and I think we go through phases like that or seasons. And I think that's the opportunity too, of to think bigger and to, to dream bigger, but also to think differently and creatively where it's not one path. It doesn't have to be. I think the biggest thing, and I hope everyone takes this out of today is to really embrace a longer term vision for your business. Um, I know Don, you and I've spoken about this quite a bit, which is we live in a society that Mm -hmm. is totally designed to, um, provide instant gratification for whatever is going on. Go anywhere online and you're going to see, um, you know, lose this many pounds in this many days, get this type of relationship, you know, before you know it, grow your business in the next five minutes, like whatever, you're going to see all of these offers. And I'm not saying those offers are bad. I'm saying discern Um, that not all of life needs to move at the speed of light. Some things can be quick, but there is a lot of value in sticking with something. And you're not going to hear a lot of people selling that because it doesn't sound sexy. But the fact is that the most successful people have stuck with something even when it got hard. And they have not given up even when they're in the dirt and the mud and the, the proverbial darkness, they keep going. And that is when, if you can get to that other side, that's where there's no competition because most people can't stick it out. Most people are too short term in their thinking that they cannot sit with the discomfort long enough to realize the proverbial promised land on the other side. And that's why, like, you know, that's why we have Olympic athletes. It's because they've stuck it out. They've endured, they've gone through the hardest training together. It's also why we have really successful business owners. It's because they keep sticking it out. They have some sort of like, and I, I, I throw myself in this. We have some sort of like insane belief. I mean, you have to be a little bit crazy to be an entrepreneur. I do. I think you have to be a little nuts because you have some sort of insane belief that you can do this. Like, I don't have a plan B. There's no plan B. Mm -hmm. If, if, if this all tanks, 
I don't know, maybe I'll go sling some um, drinks at Starbucks for healthcare. Who the hell knows? I mean, like there is no plan B. Okay. And so like a lot of entrepreneurs think like that because we, we have this drive within us, but uh, you, you can't give into the shiny object syndrome. Like you can't, you've got to recognize when it's a shiny object and just keep going. And the riches await, the riches await. They are there for those who are willing to put in the work and put in the time. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it goes back to even the title. I keep realizing more and more is like, just stay determined and yeah. success can be redefined so many times. And there is no end really to There's like no what end. success really is. If you are, like you said earlier, then you must be dead. You know, if you yeah. hit the main milestone, you know, I think that's the part too, where it's just keep going you know, you're going to have success moments, but it's just don't give up and keep trying, keep trying. Um, can, I, can I share one thing? Please um, do. I had, uh, so when I was 29, I was working full time. I hated my job. And I, there was a, a guy named Mitch who was a really successful entrepreneur that I knew, but he was like kind of funky. Like he was, he wasn't like in the traditional sense of like a quote unquote entrepreneur. Like he was doing like creating weird shit in a lab. And I'm like, this guy's cool. Like, I wish I could be more like him. Like, I don't want to follow a traditional path. And I messaged him and I said, Mitch, I'm, I'm really at a crossroads. Could you help me understand? Like, how do I, what do I do? I'm scared. Yeah. I want to start a business. I'm scared. And he said, he, he wrote me this beautiful letter and he said, you know, Laura, your life is a journey and you're going to start knocking on doors and see which doors open and mm -hmm. walk through them. And then you're going to find more doors and you're going to walk through those. And sometimes doors won't open for you. So you got to turn in another direction. And he said, and this is, and you're going to keep doing this and you're going to keep learning more about yourself and um, continue this process. And then he said, and one day you will continue doing this until you die. Mm -hmm. And that's the end. And so enjoy the process of going through this because it is the only process we will go through. People mm -hmm. think once I do this, I will have why. Yeah. Let me tell y'all something that goalpost, it really likes to move. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee that once you have X number of money, you have whatever it is, that house, whatever it is, I guarantee you're going to want the next thing. And so why not? enjoy the journey and the discovery and the process and yes, set goals and experience the richness and the joy that comes with them. But if you can actually enjoy every day, mm -hmm. uh, that's what we're here on this earth to do because it, it, you know, those moments of success are fleeting, but loving the process and the craftsmanship that comes with crafting your life and career, that's going to last every single day. You get to wake up to that. You get to wake up to the life you created for yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that you reached out to me. There was a reason that we were supposed to meet and I kind of giggle how, how we cross paths with certain people in our life. And yeah. you saw, I think it was Mel, like shared, Mel Rip shared something about me and you instantly reached out and we had a call and it was just, that's the part I think about life where it's just, I'm thankful for the people that I get to meet and surround myself with. And even though we've never met in person, I like have learned so much from you from what two calls we've only had together. Oh. And I'm just like, oh, this Thank is great. You. So um, and you know, you know, same, it's funny because sometimes I, I remember that post when Mel mentioned you, I can't remember what she said, but I remembered that post and I was like, I got to talk to this woman immediately. And sometimes you don't know why you're doing something. It, you, again, this goes back to just feeling into it. Something just feels aligned and feels right. And I would encourage people to listen to that inspiration or that inner light within you that is um, maybe gently guiding you. And, and, I'll, and by the way, and getting away from what is in it for me. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Like, I remember when I reached out to you, I didn't have an agenda. Mm -hmm. 
There was no agenda. I don't have an, I'm just like, who is Mel said to talk to you? I'm here, you know? Yeah. And so if, and you know, sometimes those things go nowhere and that's fine. That's okay. You just met someone cool. Sometimes those things go somewhere. Great. Uh, maybe you made a new friend. Great. Awesome. But like when we get into the short-term thinking of like, how can I use this person or leverage this person to give me what I want is when we run into a lot of problems in business, we run into incredible disappointment about things not turning out the way that my mind had built a whole fantasy of how things had, could turn out. And it's just not worth it. It's stupid. Mm -hmm. It's so true. But I love how you just said there too, going without like uh, an agenda. And I feel that so many people are missing opportunities of building connection, building relationships, understanding how to support one another. And I think that's the part of life of getting to learn and grow, not alone. Like, right. The most meaningful, part. like we all need advocates and champions and someone to fucking call. Yeah. Like, honestly, like shit's hard. Can we talk? Like I'm having a tough, you know, not everyone you look at, you got to have the dollar signs in your eyes. I mean, it's just stupid. Um, it's one of, you know, one of the big things we talk about with my clients and because you and I have experienced it, there's so much pushy, spammy, sleazy selling online, but you know, offline, it's just so many people sort of like looking at you as like, what can I get out of you? And yes. The main thing when we talk to clients like about signing 100,000, 50,000, whatever the size deal is that you're working on, that is a relationship. You mm -hmm. don't sign those deals by looking at somebody like, what are you going to give me for it? You sign in with walking in with a real heart of service towards another individual and an organization saying, how can I provide you with incredible value? That mindset, learning how to adopt that, learning how to have sales conversations around that, that'll change your life. And it'll make you a bunch of friends along the way. True. Mm. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much and thankful we met. And I hope our listeners really listen today because you have so much bring. And I'm just so glad sometimes that things happen for a reason for people to pivot because I see you in your element and that's amazing. And you're making big ripples. So keep oh, thanks, right. Don. Thank oh, you. you're so sweet. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for having me on the show today. Yeah. Thank you.